This week, I'm having a Modelo. This is Beer in Front, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. Every week, I'll talk about a beer that maybe we've forgotten along the way while we're chasing those check-ins and badges. Sometimes I'll have a new beer that has potential to be a classic. Being the Chicago beer guy, I'll also talk about great craft beer and craft beer news in the city of Chicago. And remember, sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. That's beer in front and it's coming up now. Welcome to the February 1st edition of Beer in Front. I thank you very much for listening. I have a good show this week. I'm going to have a Modelo Especial as the beer in front. I'm going to start off this week's show and tell you a story. I'm annoyed. A company reached out to me. That's the key part of this whole story. They reached out to me about a potential sponsorship and hooking up together. I thought it would be a great fit. I reply, and they want to set up a video meeting. I reply, I'm free all day Tuesday. I'm in central time. Let me know what works out for you. They reply, how's 1230 sound? Give me a link to this meeting. Perfect. I get together presentation on how we would be a good fit, which it still would be but not anymore. So I put together all of this, come up with ideas on how this partnership would work. 1230 rolls around, nothing. I'm in the waiting room like a jackass. So I'm like, well, that's weird. I'm waiting for 20 minutes. I'm like, "Eh, I, I can't wait around all day. I have things to do. I reply, hey, what's going on? I go to their website. They are based out of Oregon. So I'm thinking, well, maybe they meant 1230 Pacific, but I mentioned I'm in central time. So I'm like, all right, so 230 comes around, which is 1230 their time. Nothing. I'm still a jackass waiting in the waiting room. I wait for another 20 minutes and I'm done. Done with you guys sent an email like, what's going on? You reached out to me and nothing. I mean, I know things happen. People have to reschedule, things like that. That's understandable, but no correspondence, no email, no nothing like, hey, dude, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. So I'm quite annoyed about this, and I'm very impressed that I'm composed because normally I would go, just ballistic on this. So no new sponsorship for beer in front. But the moral of the story, if you are going to reach out to someone, don't ghost them. Don't pull their chain and waste their whole day. That was a good part of my day off was sitting around waiting for these jamokes that never showed up. So moral of the story do the right thing. Don't be a jag off. February is going to be a good month for beer in front. One, it's my third anniversary. Later on this month will be the third anniversary of this podcast. So I don't know if I'm going to do anything special for that outside of just putting a fancy number three on the cover art, but that's coming up. I mentioned before a couple weeks ago, I'm going to have a special pizza episode I actually recorded an interview for that already, so that's in the can, ready to go. I have some folks lined up from all over the country. We're going to talk pizza from all around the United States, New Haven, Connecticut, New York, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Detroit, Phoenix, plus Chicago. So it's going to be a good episode. I'll be putting that together this month getting that episode out in March. I've mentioned before that I have a YouTube channel, a TikTok channel. You could just search for Beer in Front and you'll find me there. 
I have out a lot of different reviews on different things. I even had one on smearing off ice. And coming up on the podcast, we're working together the time frame. Phil over at the great Wish You Were Beer Show and I are going to sit down and talk smearing off ice. Phil has the best voice in podcasting and video. You think I have a good voice? Oh, no. I am nothing compared to Phil. So you could just sit and listen to that episode and you'll have like two berry white wannabes sitting here drinking smearing off ice. I mentioned on last week's show that this week is Chicago Cider Week. So I hope everyone's out there having a great time having some great ciders from all over the world, especially Chicago companies like Northman, Eris, and Wright B. In beer news this week, and before I get started, I got a bone to pick with you people. No one sends me beer news, but you know who sends me beer news? My sweet mother. My mother sent me info on this beer that's only made for the Super Bowl. And it's made in Minnesota from the Modest Brewing Company. This is in collaboration with Hormel Chili. This is a chili cheese brew. Now, it's sold out already. You could look and maybe get some swag if you want over at Hormel chilicheesebrew.com but it's a Minnesota Pilsner with corn and it has a corn chip flavored base with hints of cheddar cheese powder and spices so if you're in the Minnesota area I don't know look around see if you could grab you a Hormel Chili Chili Cheese Brew now another person that sent something in Chance Whitmore over at Strive Seek Fine. This is really horrible. In Michigan, Vandals had over $100,000 in damage to a brewery in Michigan that was just building and starting up. They're not sure now if they're even going to continue with all of the damage. So that's just real shitty. I don't understand kids these days. Dovetail in Chicago. They're coming out with dovetail vinegars. They have a house vinegar, a Vienna malt vinegar, and a Rauch malt vinegar. These sound really good. They're a finishing vinegar. They use, according to them, a hand-selected blend of misfit barrels to use for vinaigrettes, shrubs, and is a secret ingredient in chocolate cakes. So if you're in the Chicago area, head over to Dovetail and pick up one of their new vinegars. In another case of what's old is new again, Natural Light from Anheuser-Busch is coming out with a new can, but it's not a new can. They're going back to one of their earlier designs. I remember seeing this back in like the late 70s, early 80s. So I think they're trying to capture that retro feel. So look for the new old natural light can near you this week in milwaukee you could pick up 77 golden ale this is brewed from students at marquette university february 4th is national marquette day this will be on tap at three local breweries and available in cans at pfizer forum which is the arena where Marquette plays, the Milwaukee Bucks play. So look for that from Marquette University. I mentioned last year on the show that legendary rock band Rush came out with a golden ale. This is made in Canada from the Henderson Brewing Company. Now they're coming out with Rush Canadian Golden Ale Muster. There is a YouTube clip featuring Getty Lee and Alex Lyson. That's terrific. I love good beer mustards. The people from Shorts sent me over a mustard after I talked about Soft Parade a few weeks ago. That's delicious. I've had other ones. Sierra Nevada, I don't know if they still 
put it out there, but they had a good mustard out years back that was great on brats and everything else. So if you're looking for a new mustard, check out Rush Canadian Golden Ale Mustard. Speaking of Sierra Nevada, they announced that Bigfoot Barley Wine is coming out soon, and this is going to be the 40th anniversary of Bigfoot. So if you're a fan of barley wines, check out Bigfoot from Sierra Nevada. I've mentioned before on the show that I'm a big fan of Topo Chico's Hard Seltzer and also the Simply Spiked Lemonade. Well, you know who else likes them? Molson Coors, because they combined for $287 million in sales, really added to Molson Coors' bottom line. I found a cool new website to check out if you're looking for places to go to. Check out findmeabrewery.com. And finally, in Chicago, this weekend on February 5th in Evanston at Temperance, they're having a donut fest. I don't know about you, but donuts and beer, sign me up. So if you're in the Chicago area on the 5th, head over to Temperance for the Donut Fest Chicago Burbs. Hey, you there. We've got a question for you. Are you tired of clickbait stories and the loudest voices driving discussions in culture and entertainment? If so, I'm Dylan. I'm Kendall. And I'm Corey. And we host the podcast From the Middle. We're middle class guys living in the middle of America, in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view somewhere in the middle. We take a more reasonable and centrist approach in our discussions covering genres like comedy, culture, entertainment, and interviews with really interesting folks like business owners, comic creators, doctors, news anchors, New York Times best-selling illustrators, professional stand-up comics, and more. We really value a relaxed and conversational podcast, one that we hope is so fun and laid back, you'll forget you're not actually hanging out with us. So search at From the Mid Pod, just like it sounds, or check us out everywhere you can find podcasts. You can check out my friends from the middle each and every week on your favorite podcast platform. A couple beers I had this week I want to talk about. One was from 18th Street. This was a porter called The Shield. That was very good. There's another one. I would talk more about it, but I didn't have a lot of it because it was stolen from me by Ruby. Maracoya. Casa Milde, please forgive me. I know I fucked it up. Maracoya Dreamin'. This is a wheat beer that was very good. The little bit I had was very good. But Ruby liked it more. I had some of it. It was tart. I was I was not expecting tart. I was expecting more sweet. So as I had a couple sips, I'm like, wow, this is really good. Being the good husband that I am, I'm like, hey, babe, why don't you try this? Well, she not only tried it, she drank it all. So I thought it was good. Ruby thought it was better, but I like everything from Casa Humilde. The beer in front of me this week is Modelo Especial. Modelo is the sixth ranked beer sold in America. I looked at the 2021 stats. Hugely popular beer. This is a golden, full-flavored Pilsner style lager with a clean, crisp finish. Modelo has been around since 1925, so this definitely is an old school classic. Now, according to their website, this has an orange blossom and honey aroma with a hint of herb, and it contains water, barley malt, non malted cereals, and hops. Modelo checks in at 4.4%. So let's crack it open and have a Modelo. If I could give a score based on the can opening sound, Modelo is a 10. The color is a little darker than what I was expecting. I was expecting a, a lighter beer. So they definitely use 
a little bit of darker malt in here. Good foam. Good two fingers of, like, say, eggshell white foam on this. Smells very good. Smells like a good old school, you know, Pilsner old school lager. Smells great. You know, the taste on this is really good. Uh, I couldn't tell you the last time I had a Modelo. They say it's got that orange blossom honey. I get a little tartness to this as I'm drinking it. There's a little tartness up front. I get some sweetness here from the malt. I think this is excellent. It's well carbonated. has a good, like, aftertaste, good finish. There's a reason why this is the sixth ranked beer as far as sales in America, because it's a damn good beer. I don't know why I slept on Modelo for so long. If you're looking for a macro, a mass-produced beer that's available everywhere, you can get this everywhere. They have the classic old-school bottle that looks great, that has the gold foil. As you heard from me opening, I bought this in a can. This was in a 24-ounce can that I picked up at a grocery store, so you could get it in a variety of formats. This is really good. Uh, I think I like this one a lot better than Corona. Like I said, it's been around since 1925, so they're getting close to their 100th anniversary. If you haven't had a Modelo in a while or you're a beer snob and don't think that you would like this, think again. Modelo is really, really good. Put it in the cart. You will not be disappointed. Modelo is an excellent beer. The artist of the week is Steve Earle and the Dukes. I first heard Steve Earle back in the late 80s on WXRT. And maybe about 10 days ago, legendary Chicago disc jockey Lynn Bramer passed away. I'm sure it was from Lynn that I heard Guitar Town, Exit Zero. His earlier work, and even now his current work is still brilliant, but Steve Earle is a great American singer-songwriter, country rock, if you want to categorize him, which I probably never would have heard if it wasn't for Lynn Bramer. He was a great disc jockey, really was the last DJ. Everything now is, you know, computer-generated, AI-generated. So Lynn really was the last DJ. I never met him in person. I've seen him a million times introducing bands at shows throughout the city. And whoever he was introducing, he just made you feel like this was the most important band in the world. Rest well, Mr. Bramer. I mean, you brought my life countless joy over the last 30 some years. If you get a chance, listen to anything from Steve Earle, you won't be disappointed. But definitely check out his first two records, Guitar Town and Exit Zero. That's when I first heard him, courtesy of XRT. That's going to wrap things up for this week's episode of Beer in Front. I thank you very much for listening. If you want to get a hold of me, you can email me, dave at beerinfront.com or on the podinbox.com voicemail. Why do I say this? No one ever does it. Email me, dave at beerinfront.com. You can reach me on all social media platforms at Beer in Front. I thank you for listening. Have a great week. I'll see you next week. And remember, sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet.